A little bit steer from that old Yorkshire geek. A bit of showbiz news. Showbiz, you pick showbiz, as Jim Bowen would say, on um, that darts thing. I forgot what they bloody call it. Anyway, whatever. Um, nobody outside the UK knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, a bit of showbiz news. This is from the BBC. Hollywood's big boom has gone bust. Apologies for my hair, by the way. Being in the shower. Can't do anything with it. I should just go back to being a voice on the in the clouds, shouldn't I? <laughs> but no, you've got me. You've got me now. Right, so let's have a look at this article. Here it is. Uh, Hollywood's big boom has gone bust, says the BBC, or Regan Morris from Los Angeles. There's the Hollywood sign. Right, off we go. Michael Fortin was at the heart of Hollywood's golden age of streaming. By the way, I've not read this article. I just thought... I just saw the headline and thought, sod it, let's just read it and we'll see what happens. The actor and aerial cinematographer turned his hobby of flying drones into a profitable business in 2012, just as the streaming wars were taking off. Was it that long ago? 12 years ago? Is that? It seems a long time, does that? Anyway. For a decade, he was flying high above film sets, creating sleek aerial shots for movies and TV shows on Netflix, Amazon and Disney. And now he's on the verge of becoming homeless again. He was evicted from the Huntingdon, Huntington, Be- Huntington. What am I like? Beach home he shared with his wife and two young children. And now he's being booted from the Las Vegas apartment they moved to because they could no longer afford to live in Southern California. Maybe they were living above the means. I don't know. Anyway, I don't. I don't, I don't live in America. We were saving to buy a house. We had money. We had done things the right way. Obviously not. If they get booted, they have to move, and then they're going to get booted out of the house they're living in now. Anyway, two years ago, he says, two years ago, I didn't worry about going out to dinner with my wife and kids and spending 200 bucks. Now I worry about going out and spending $5 on a value meal at McDonald's. Other fast food chains are available. Um, Yeah, okay. Well, we've all been there. I'm not making light of his predicament, by the way. It is sad when people fall on hard times we've all been there Uh, or most of us have for over a decade business was booming in hollywood with studios battling to catch up to new companies like netflix and hulu but the good times ground to a halt in may 2023 when hollywood's writers went on strike Um, because they're idiots essentially (laughs) i'm sorry but they are Uh, and the actors Um, they all went on strike and what did they get for it bugger all They got laid off. That's what they did. They got out of work. That's what they got for it. Anyway, the strikes lasted multiple months and marked the first time since the 1960s that both writers and actors joined forces, effectively shutting down Hollywood production. But rather than roaring back in the one year since the strikes ended, production has fizzled. Yes, it has. Um, Kind of shot themselves in the foot, didn't they? Anyway, Projects have been cancelled and production was cut across the city as jobs have dried up with layoffs at many studios. Uh, Most recently at Paramount. Uh, It had a second round of layoffs this week as the storied movie company moves to cut 15% of its workforce ahead of a merger with the production company Skydance. Which I kind of covered this yesterday in a story, didn't I? A video. Um, But I've seen somewhere that something like 40%, is it 40% of um, projects have just have just just gone? Uh, which means 40% of people are out of work, I suppose. You know, you could argue it like that. Oh, and there's Michael Fortin. Was on set nearly every day before the strikes. Now we can barely find work. Right. Unemployment in film and TV in the United States was at 12.5% in August. Uh, but many think those numbers are actually much higher. Maybe that's the 40%. Of them. Think, oh, there we go. Because many film workers either do not file for unemployment benefits because they're not eligible or they've exhausted those benefits after months of not working. I mean, that's what it's like in America, isn't it, apparently. It's much easier in the UK. If you're out of work, you, you can you go sign on and you get your benefits. You don't get a lot. Um, unless you've got kids and married and stuff like that, and you get a bit more. But if you're like a single person uh, unemployed, you don't get a lot. You can't get barely enough to get by to pay the bills and stuff like that um but anyway but you get help with rent and, 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 and all that and all that jazz. you can get like um they used to call it rent rebate i forgot what they call it now um because i get it because <laughs> i'm very poor um anyway 
Uh, as a whole, uh, but that's in the UK, that's not America. I know in America it's a lot harder, isn't it? If you're not working, it's a lot harder. Uh, because, you know, there are there are benefits and stuff like that, but they run out, don't they? They're essentially, they don't run out in the UK. Um, anyway, as a whole, the number of US productions during the second quarter of 2024 was down about 40%, there we go, compared to the same period in 2022. See, I do hear some things that are, that are right. I don't get everything wrong. Globally, there was a 20% decline over that period, according to Prod Pro, uh, which tracks TV and film productions. That means less new movies. You mean fewer? Bloody hell, Regan. You're right for the BBC. Get your words right. That means fewer new movies and binge-worthy shows for us. Uh, I think that's... I th the English language is changing, isn't it? It is changing. I tried to go off on the tangent and start rambling again, but it is changing. And more people are starting to say, that, that will replace less will replace fewer um, in the, the coming years. And the word of instead of have, that's going to that's gonna start being, you know, normal English. You know, I should have done whatever. He said I should have. Does me head in. <laughs> but that's how, that's how language changes, doesn't it? Words get replaced. Anyway, that's by the by. But experts say the streaming boom wasn't sustainable and studios are trying to figure out how to be profitable uh, in the new world when people don't pay for cable TV funded by commercials. I do. I've still got my cable TV. I hardly watch anything on it, but it's all it's like bundled in with me, my internet and phone and all that, so... And it costs a bloody arm and a leg. And here I'm moaning about being poor. <sighs> But it was a deal. <laughs> I had the money off thing and I'm stuck with it for two years or 18 months or whatever. Anyway, uh, the air has come out of the content bubble, says Matthew Belloni, the founder of Puck News, um, which covers the entertainment industry. Crisis is a good word. I try not to be alarmist, but crisis is what people are feeling. It seems that way, particularly, you know, in Hollywood, um, in, in, in terms of finding work and stuff like that and getting pro projects off the ground, um, you know, people are people are losing money and people are, like this poor chap, um, Michael Fortin, going to end up being homeless, uh, it seems. But uh, anyway, hopefully the, the, the him, him speaking to the BBC will, will find him a job. Hopefully somebody will read it and say, oh, we need somebody that does aerial photography. Anyway. Anyway, I was going to say something else and I forgot what it was. Oh, I cable TV and all that. Yeah, people have stopped. A lot of people have stopped paying for cable TV or just going for like the, the very basic, you know, if you've got like a bundle like I've used, get the very basic TV package. Um, because it's all bloody, um, why am I swearing? Don't know. But it's all blooming um, streaming services now, isn't it? It's your Netflix, your Amazon, your Disney, um, your, um, what else is there? Uh, Paramount Plus. Um, I think that's all we've got in the UK, but other in America, you've got your Hulus and um, your Maxes and your Peacocks. And but then again, we do have those sort of over here, but they're kind of the part of Amazon. Amazon tends to they're, they're with Amazon. If you go through Amazon, you can add the, like the MGM channel and the Paramount Plus channel, and I think the Peacock channel might be in there somewhere. Um, and in the UK, you've got Now TV, which is like another streaming service, uh, which it like kind of includes. It's got various things with it, but it kind of includes stuff from um, Macs and, and things like that. But anyway, uh, so people are paying for all those instead of paying for a cable TV um, thing. But if you're an idiot like me, you've got both. <laughs> no wonder why I have no money. I don't wonder why I have no money. I know particularly why, exactly why I have no money. Anyway, right, where were we? Part of the boom was fueled by Wall Street, where tech giants like Netflix saw record growth and, and studios like Paramount saw their share prices soar for uh, adding... What am I speaking? I'm getting all bloody shatnerish, aren't I? All my sentences are getting broken up. Saw their share prices soar for adding their own streaming service offers. Uh, yeah, because everybody saw, during, particularly during lockdown, they saw how Netflix were doing really, really well. Um... And they all wanted a piece of that, a slice of that cake, didn't they? Or a slice of that pie, or whatever the term is. So they all started their own streaming services. And then they found um, it's not quite as easy as they thought it was. And um, even Netflix struggled for a while, but then it eventually asserted itself as the big boy, didn't it? 
Um, but uh, like I said, the others seem to be struggling, particularly like Disney and Paramount Plus and Peacock. Um, but anyway, anyway. Uh, it caused an overheating of the content market. There were 600 scripted live action series airing just a few years ago, and then the stock market stopped rewarding that, Mr. Baloney says. Netflix crashed. Well, it didn't really, did it? It didn't really crash. What are you talking about? Uh, all the other companies crashed. Netflix came out on. Oh, they were, Netflix has since recovered. I don't think it crashed, though, did it? It went into a bit of a slump, as they all did. Um, because it overstretched. It started producing too much of its own stuff and spending too much money on its own stuff. And then it thought, hang on, we don't need we don't need to be doing all that. So they kind of recovered, didn't they? Uh, they were doing films like that Bright film and they were doing like making films with big stars and spending like hundreds of millions of dollars on them um, and not getting anything in return, essentially. Not getting enough in return because people were already subscribed to Netflix. Um... And I wonder, you know, had they reached the, the ceiling of subscribers? Some could, some could argue that. Anyway, uh, Netflix has since recovered, but the others are really struggling to get to profitability. Uh, I think Netflix has recently just gone into profit, hasn't it? It's been in, like, in the red for donkey's years, which they expected, and I think recently it's just gone into profit, hasn't it? I'm sure I've seen that somewhere. Anyway. Uh, and along with the streaming bubble bursting, I think Max has just gone into profitability as well, hasn't it, I think? Uh, and along with the streaming bubble bursting, some productions are also being lured away from California by attractive tax incentives in other states and countries. Uh, Los Angeles leaders are so concerned about the slowdown that Mayor Karen, Bra uh, Karen Bass sorry, uh, created a task force last month to consider new incentives for film production in Hollywood. I, th I think productions are starting to come back to the UK now, because I think the new Labour government that we've got, I think, has started... Um, putting in the um, uh, sort of like giving out tax incentives uh, big ones for studios to come over here and film in the UK anyway where were we? The, the entertainment industry is critical to the economic vitality of the Los Angeles region, Bass said announcing the plan, explaining it is a cornerstone of the city's economy and supplies hundreds of thousands of jobs recent data shows the entertainment industry contributes over 115 billion dollars, 86 billion pounds, annually to the region's economy, so not just the country as a whole, but just California I suppose with an employment base of over 681,000 people, the mayor said. Uh, there's the idiots on strike. Uh, for nothing, essentially. You went on strike, you lost your job. But it was worth it in the long run. No. The writers and actors' strikes lasted for months and resulted in union contracts that offered more money and protections against artificial intelligence. But, you know, did it? <laughs> did, did it really, you know, was it... You know, a, a knee jerk. Were they having a knee jerk reaction to AI? You know, what it, is it all blow? Is it a storm in the teacup? We know AI is coming, and we know it's getting more powerful and all that. But um, anyway, Duncan Crabtree Island, the chief negotiator with the Screen Actors Guild Union, told the BBC that some consolidation in Hollywood was inevitable. He says he is optimistic that production will be ramping up soon. Well, that's what we're all hoping. But um, it doesn't seem to be happening, really, does it? Although there are still, you know, studios are still making announcements that just don't seem as many as they used to be, does it? What makes these companies special, what gives them their unique ability to create value is their relationship with creative talent, he said, while visiting a picket line outside a Disney office in September where video game voice actors are currently on strike fighting for similar protections. Yeah, so they'll be out of a job soon. Hollywood always thinks it's in crisis, he says. It is a town that constantly faces technological innovation, all kinds of change, which is part of the magic. Um, some might say it's not really magic. I mean, some say, you know, George Lucas and Star Wars and all that changed the face of the industry, and it did. And was it all for the better? I don't know, to be completely honest. Um, anyway. Part of keeping content fresh is everyone having the idea that things don't always have to be the way they've been. Mr 14's drone company was operating nearly every day before the strikes. Now he's flown the drones just 22 days in the year since the strikes ended. I mean, it could not just be that. It could be that there's more drone operators out there. Because we hear about them all the time now, don't we? All these drones flying about. 
So it could just be it could just be a, a more competitive market now. Maybe he needs to lower his prices, maybe or something, I don't know. Anyway, and as an actor, he often plays tough guys. Oh, so he's an actor as well, isn't he? He has worked just ten days. He used to work as a background actor to get by, but the pay barely covers the gas money to get to Los Angeles from Las Vegas. It was a great wave and it crashed, Mr Fortin said, after a day flying his drones on the Apple TV Plus show Platonic, his first gig with drones since April. Things are coming in little by little, he says in his van, before driving back to Las Vegas for a court hearing to fight his eviction order. Well, good luck with that, Michael. Hollywood gave me everything, he says, but it feels like the industry has turned its back on lots of people, not just me. Well, that's Hollywood, isn't it? Um, Hollywood is a vicious place and it's um, it doesn't care about you not really it says it does but it doesn't because you know Hollywood people entertainment industry people are generally two-faced bastards there I'm sorry for swearing but uh, they are they'll say one thing to your face and then they'll say another thing when you're not there uh, some might say that's not just the entertainment industry but it is pretty pervasive in the entertainment industry they'll they'll, they'll Sing your praises at you, but then they'll fire you the next the next breath. But uh, that's Hollywood for you. So there we go. Anyways, that, that's the BBC covering this stuff. Hollywood's big boom has gone bust, but is it coming back? Is it going to boom again? Everything goes in cycles, doesn't it? Um, it will recover, but will it be the same? Like I said, we've got AI to contend with as well. Um, some might say that's helping. It's making things look better. Sometimes might, some might say it's make, making things sound better. Um, you, when it's used as a tool rather than a, a creative um, platform. But uh, we'll see. Well, we'll see what happens. That's all we can say. And Re Regan Morris, remember, it's fewer, not less. <laughs> At the moment. At the moment. But uh, anyway, good luck to Michael Fortin and his court hearing. I hope he doesn't get evicted. And I hope his work picks up. I hope his work picks up and his family does okay. And he can go out and spend $200 again for a family meal. Anyway, and not have to go to McDonald's for a happy meal. Because McDonald's not as good as it used to be, is it? But I'm rambling again. I'm going, I'm going, uh, I'm going uh, off, off topic as usual. Right, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Uh, by the way, I think I've said it before. I think a lot of people have said it that um, 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 the streaming services. I think they will um, it, it, they will it will shrink and we'll see mergers and stuff like that down the line. But people have been saying that for a few years and it, it hasn't quite happened yet. But maybe it's going to happen uh, over the next few years. We'll see mergers. We'll see like Paramount and Peacock merging and stuff like that. Just in terms of streaming services, sharing content with each other. Or if not merging, as I said, sharing content, um, which um, which might not be a bad idea. Or just just sell, or not sell, but um, what's the word? Um, lease out your content to people like Netflix and, and all that, and Amazon. Um, do that, that's a good way to make money, isn't it? But... Um, because I think Warner Brothers have started doing that, haven't it? And, um, and, and, well, Sony is the only big studio, is it Columbia? It's the only big studio that doesn't have its own streaming service, I don't think. I know they used to have the PlayStation streaming service, didn't they? But they stopped that, didn't they? Um, but anyway. Anyway, again, I'm rambling again. So, right. So we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. So, right. Will Hollywood recover? We will see. We will see. I'm sure it will. It will, won't it? It will. But, uh, uh, you know, as I said earlier, everything goes in uh, in cycles. Right, so we'll leave it there. So thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, hopefully my hair will look a bit better. <laughs> I'll save it.